This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. In this lesson now, we want to continue a discussion of things that support our developers and their custom code by talking about sandboxed solutions. So we'll first define what a sandbox solution is, and then we'll configure the user code service, and then we'll configure quotas and how you can block solutions. So first of all, a sandbox solution. This is a secure environment in which to run custom code. So you can create this sandbox solution. It's going to give a separate worker process, a unique environment within which that code can run. It still integrates with the rest of SharePoint. We're just giving it a unique uh, worker process or service application that it can uh, run under the context of. What that means is while we're implementing, while we're testing, while we're sort of initially deploying new code elements, uh, we can separate them from the rest of the worker processes that make up the majority of our SharePoint environment. Because the way worker processes and application pools work is if something fails inside of there, it has to recycle the whole application pool, which means you would bring down everything momentarily while it restarts up those services. So with a sandbox solution, if that code is experiencing problems and we have to recycle that worker process, it's not affecting the rest of SharePoint. It creates a secure, isolated environment. Uh, gives a strict, uh, stricter code access security policy can be applied there. Um, and farm administrators can set quotas, resource quotas, in terms of what that um, worker process is allowed to do. So as it tries to consume resources like memory and CPU and disk I.O., uh, we can put quotas on that to prevent it from running away with the server resources. Um, sandbox solutions are stored in the solution gallery, which is where you would find them. And users can create their own composite applications and run them in the sandbox solution as well. Now, there's something also called the user code service. Uh, several processes are required to enable a sandbox solution. The user code service, which is spuchostservice.exe. Uh, there's the sandbox worker process we talked about, and then a sandbox worker process proxy. Um, and then you can configure the user code service to determine where the sandbox solutions run. So you need a combination of these. These are the elements that you would configure in order to deploy or control the, uh, the ultimate sandbox solutions. And then you configure quotas and blocking. So farm administrators can set quotas for sandbox solutions. Uh, you can set those quotas in each site collection. You can set them separately in each site collection. And they can also tune how points are calculated. Points have to do with uh, the resources that a solution is trying to utilize. And then we can also block solutions. So a farm administrator could come in and say, look, this solution has been just t tying up way too many resources. It's just not been successful. I'm going to block it completely. So ultimately what it means is the farm administrator has a level of control over these solutions um, that uh, gives them the power to shut them off or to at least uh, hone them in. 